everyone. This is Kelly Fiala, the program manager of our Philip Merrill Environmental <laughs> Education Program. Um, I'm out here today with my dog on Black Walnut Creek, just checking on the center. Um, and I also really wanted to just show you all a few things that, that we have going on down here at the creek. Earlier, I went out and I moved some of the oysters around in our cages out there and got all of these different organisms out from in there. Um, so you might be wondering why were they in there. Um, so just thinking about the habitat and the structure that these provide, especially for the smaller fish um, as they're growing, um, it's super important that they have that structure and kind of hiding spaces. So a lot of times with students, we'll ask the students at the beginning of the day, you know, what's your superpower? Um, a lot of times they'll say, you know, invisibility, and we kind of compare that to these grass shrimp, which are clear and kind of blend in with their surroundings. Um, we've got mud crabs, they kind of like burrow deep into the mud. So a lot of these fish, um, there's a few different kinds in here, um, are really well adapted to living in the bay, but that oyster habitat is essential for their survival. So this next kind of experiment is um, we're going to put the same amount of fish, um, the same types of fish, into these two containers. One will have oyster shells in it and the other one will not. And we're just going to kind of watch and see what happens. So we've got our oyster habitat tank here, and then we've got our just plain water. So this is more like the open bay. This is more of the oyster habitat and reef structure. If you um, can see in here, we've got roughly, um, I'll admit that I kind of lost count, but we've got roughly the same amount of fish. There might even be a few more in this tank. Um, but if you can imagine you're a fish, just think about which one you would want to live in. Um, do you think that these will survive nearly as long as these say there's birds flying over um, or even people looking to use fish as bait. So just kind of a really simple um, representation of the benefits of oyster reef habitat. So um, we actually have a man, um, a man-made oyster reef out in Black Walnut Creek. So a lot of times when we have students um, come out, we can often have them go out and plant a few oysters on the reef, um, making sure that we maintain that kind of like vertical structure. Um, so I'm going to just show you one other thing, um, and that would be really just to show you the benefits of a vertical reef structure. You can see they're having a lot harder um, of a time to kind of hide under those oysters. Whereas if I carefully mound it up, you can see where they all go. So they're obviously big fans of vertical um, oyster habitat. We're obviously big fans of oysters in general. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of use these as some um, representations of why oysters um, and the life that they sustain are so important to the Chesapeake Bay.